Higher cost of living. Many people are taking a closer look at how much value they're getting from their employer. Here with advice on how to make your work perks work for you work perks. is the founder of Money Wise Workplaces, Kelly Keene. Happy New Happy Year, New Kelly. Year, Good to see you. Good morning, Didi and Sid. Happy New Year to you as well. That was a mouthful for sure, Sid. Listen, love to see you in that Kelly Green, no less. Lovely blazer. Let's talk about it. You say, let's think holistically when it comes to our jobs. So you're talking about not just salary or hourly wages. What do you mean when you say holistically for a work perk? Yeah, and Dina, you know, we need to think what, like, usually I'm talking with you and Sid about investments. This is your biggest investment. You, even if you earn the average salary, you're going to earn millions of dollars during your lifetime. So you want to look at your career as an asset. And what I mean by looking at it holistically is generally we think of work as very transactional. You get a salary or a wage and you do these things. Um, what the Great Recession and quiet quitting taught us is it's so much more than that. People want wellness at work. Mm -hmm. They, you know, their work is their identity. It's so much more than just, you know, what you do and what you get paid for. So it's a really important conversation moving forward for not just employees to lean into their work or find work or skills that they love, but also for employers to pay attention to that as well. Uh, Kelly, what are some of the common non-salary perks that people should be looking at here? Yeah, so Sid, the National Payroll Institute says that here's the top non-salary perks. It's medical insurance, life insurance, uh, being reimbursed for your transportation, for your, your automobile, and on-the-job training. So first, when it comes to medical benefits, if you've ever been self-employed, you know how incredibly expensive those yeah. are. And Diva was just saying that he needs a massage. Absolutely, if you're doing a lot of repetitive work, you definitely need to be leaning into those benefits. And guys, people are leaving so much money. Sid, you were saying millions of dollars on the table of not taking advantage of these types of benefits, not to mention the billions of dollars that are left on the table every year in not leaning into your employer's matching program. So, you know, when it comes out as well to on-the-job training, this is a really big perk that people might not be taking advantage of, might not realize they have. Because guys, like gone are the days of having one job, one employer. Industries are changing so fast. Jobs, positions are disappearing or, or appearing. So it's making sure that you're really leaning into expanding your skill set. Hopefully your employer pays for it. If you have to pay for it on your own, talk to your boss and see if you can get it reimbursed. Okay, Kelly, lastly, as we run out of time, you say think outside the box. It's not just about cash. So maybe it's that um, the work perk of, of not commuting to the office or the shorter work week, the four-day work week. So is that something you could talk to your boss about and negotiate? Exactly. And I mean, the thing is, you know, if you've got kids at home, if that commute is costing you a lot because you're in Vancouver or Toronto, those dollars really add up. You bet. It could be salary. It could be perks. It could be a four-day work week, remote work, or it could just be a better title. So all of these things are up for negotiation, especially in this job market moving forward. Great advice. Kelly, great stuff. The website is kellykeen.com. Instagram at kellykeenbiz. Kelly, again, Happy New Year. Great to see you.